to thank you for joining us for this webinar concerning electronic access to current and historical newspapers through the State Library of Florida. Just as a heads up, there's no need to take notes as I'll be sending out the slides for this presentation and a recording of the webinar within three business days following the live session. Again, my name is Isabella Fulmar and I serve as both the Florida Collection Librarian and the Outreach Librarian for the State Library. That means that in addition to giving presentations like this one, my job involves collection development for the Florida Special Collection and reference services. If you would like to follow up with me later, you can see my contact information here. Before we talk about newspapers, I'd like to give an overview of our services, including the benefits of signing up for a state library card. After that, I'll give a demonstration of the US Newsstream database followed by demonstrations of ProQuest New York Times, Historical Newspapers Southeast Collection, and Newspapers.com. We'll end by touching on our desktop delivery services. At the State Library, we offer specialized research assistance in person as well as via phone and email. This means that we not only serve state employees local to Tallahassee, we serve state employees across the state. We also provide interlibrary loan services meaning that if there's a publication you're seeking that's not already in our collection, we cooperate with a network of libraries to retrieve the publication you need from elsewhere statewide. We also offer a table of contents service, which allows state employees to request articles via email from popular magazines, as well as peer-reviewed journals connected to their discipline. We provide 24-7 access to electronic databases, including the databases I'll be showing you later in the presentation to view current newspapers. However, this collection of databases also includes JSTOR, Science Direct, Academic Search Premier, and many others which provide useful articles for your research. Lastly, we provide on-demand scanning of library documents with the caveat that scanning is limited by staff availability and copyright restrictions. If you haven't already, it will be necessary for you to obtain a state library card in order to make use of the services that the state library offers to state employees remotely, including electronic newspaper databases. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take one moment to conduct a little poll. So how many of you have a state library card? I'll give it a few minutes. Alrighty, it's looking like 93% of you have voted and we're getting a 100% yes response rate. Wonderful, I'm so glad that you all have state library cards. Um, if it's been a while since you signed up, um, I encourage you to just um, be sure to renew um, if it's been over a year or so, just to make sure that we have all the latest contact information for you. Thank you so much. Okay, so, and this would be the form that you would use not only to apply for the card, um, but also to renew. And since all of you have a library card, I think you pretty much know the drill. So we'll go ahead and proceed to the next slide. With that bit of introductory information out of the way, let's discuss the US Newsstream database. This is the most comprehensive of our newspaper databases. It includes nearly four decades worth of stories from local, national, and international news sources. It's updated every day with articles from the latest issues as they are published, and you can set up current alerts to receive an email when new articles on a topic of interest are added to the database. U.S. Newsstream includes many of the most popular daily newspapers both in Florida and nationwide, including the, Tash the Tallahassee Democrat, the Orlando Sentinel, the Tampa Bay Times, the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, LA Times, and many others. A number of Spanish language newspapers providing coverage of stories developing within Florida are included within the database, such as La Prensa, based in Long Longwood, El Sentinel, the Spanish language version of the Orlando Sentinel, 
and Hispanic PR Newswire based in Miami. Some of the main limitations of the US Newsstream database are that the holdings in terms of date range provided vary by paper. Not every paper within the database is current, though for the papers I've named so far, current issues are provided. Also, only the text from the articles are included. No photographs, infographics, or other visuals. So without further ado, let's run a live tutorial of the US Newsstream database. And I'll just take one moment to switch gears and break out the database in our browser. Bear with me, please. Okay. Thank you for bearing with me. So first we are navigating to the e-resources for state employees page. And that's at gailpages.com forward slash state library FL. Once we're on the e-resources page, we'll scroll down to US Newsstream. We'll begin by running a keyword search. Since my audience today is comprised of criminal justice policy analysts, I'll run a search related to ju criminal justice policy. Let's search for articles concerning Florida's incarceration rate. We'll also be sure to check the box for full text to ensure that we can read the entire articles rather than having our search return synopses or citations. That search returned over 6,000 results, which is a completely overwhelming amount of information. So we're going to need to narrow our scope. We see at the top that the first search result is from 2007. It's over 14 years old. And um, I, I think we should search for some more recent articles. So we'll do that by using limiters on the left-hand side of the database. Scroll down to publication date and let's set the criteria to just articles from 2020 and 2021. And then click update. That has narrowed our search results down to 761 articles. Still quite a bit of information. Let's apply some more limiters. We'll scroll down again and this time select document type. And when we select document type, we see that not only do these search results include news articles, they also include editorials, interview transcripts, commentary, and blog posts. First, let's select news to ensure that we're only returning news articles. Similarly, if we scroll down and use the source type limiter, we see that the database is pulling from news blogs, news websites, print newspapers, and other news resources. Let's say that we only want to see what was published in print newspapers. In that case, we'll select newspapers. That narrows the search results down to 240 articles. Okay. But what if we want to narrow our scope down even further? There's a location limiter that will allow you to narrow the articles down to Florida Stories only. So we'll scroll down to that location limiter, select Florida, and that gives us 91 results. And we also have a subject limiter. If we scroll down and select subject, we get a few options, and if we select more, 
You'll see that this subject list is really exhaustive and each subject shows a count of how many articles are tagged with that subject. That's on the right here. Very useful when tailoring your searches to a particular niche within criminal justice policy. For now, I'll select imprisonment. And I'll select include. And that gives us only 20 results. So what if this were a search that you often need information on when working on a project? What if I told you that you could receive alerts via email whenever a new article on this topic arrives within the database? You can. Now that we've set up this search, we can go to save search alert underneath. Hold on one second. One moment. Save search alert underneath the magnifying glass and either select create alert or create RSS feed or create search link, whichever suits your need. If you select create alert, you'll see this box pop up. It will allow you to name the alert, send the alert to your email address and define your alert content. This means that you can define the alert to either notify you of newly published articles, newly published documents only, articles which are hot off the press, or newly added documents, including older articles that only recently were uploaded to the database. You can then adjust the frequency of your alerts. I recommend daily or weekly, depending on the timeline of your project. Then you'll just hit create alert. Setting up this kind of alert can also allow you to receive updates on one particular developing story as well. Just by setting the um, limiters regarding the publication date and adjusting your keywords to, ta to tailor that to um, the developing story. So let's try searching by publication now. We'll go ahead and select publications from the top tabs. And let's say that you want to find a specific newspaper, such as the Tallahassee Democrat, the Tampa Bay Times, Orlando Sentinel, Wall Street Journal, or Washington Post. You could either type in your search term in the search bar, or you can use this alphabetical form. Um, alphabetical search function. For Tallahassee Democrat, we'll select T for Tallahassee Democrat. And then it's the second result here. I'm going to go ahead and just take a second to check on the chat to make sure I don't have any messages. And it looks like we're good. All right, thank you. Okay, so we are now on the main page for the Tallahassee Democrat within the database. If you scroll down, you'll see articles from today's issue. Just as an FYI, there's often a delay between when an article is published on the newspaper's website and when it migrates into the database. To the right of publication information, we see the option create alert right here. That enables you to be alerted whenever new articles from the Tallahassee Democrat are added to the database. And this is what the form looks like. So if you set up an alert to be notified whenever articles are coming from the Tallahassee Democrat into the ProQuest database, you'll receive all the latest articles via email. If you'd like, you can also run keyword searches within the publication using this search bar here. Let's search for criminal justice within the publication.
That brings up nearly 4,000 results, so let's use our limiters again to narrow the scope. I'm going to narrow the scope by publication date, only showing material from 2020 through the present. Okay, so that brings us up to or down to 253 articles. And if you'd like, you could now set up current alerts um, for this specific search term within the publication. So you would just go to save search alert, then click create alert. And as I mentioned, Spanish language publications are included within US Newsstream. To find specific Spanish language newspapers within the main US Newsstream, you could go to publications and then you could run a keyword search for La Prensa, El Sentinel, or Hispanic PR Newswire, or you could go back to the e-resources page and scroll down to US Hispanic Newsstream and search from here or go to the publications tab to check out all of the different publications that are offered. Okay, so let's proceed to discuss the New York Times databases from ProQuest. We'll return to the e-resources page. Okay, and the State Library provides access to two different New York Times databases, current and historical. The current database provides coverage from 1980 through the present, while the historical database covers 1851 through 2017. Let's look at the current version. As you can see, it's um, designed identically to US Newsstream so far because it's provided by the same publisher, ProQuest. You can again run keyword searches um, just like in US Newsstream. However, if we select publications, we see that we have access to a number of different publications from New York Times in addition to the print um, newspaper and the online version of the Times. So in addition to the print version and the online version of the Times, we have New York Times Magazine, the New York Times Book Review, um, the Spanish language version of the Times, and transcripts from New York Times Video and the Daily Podcast. If you had run a keyword search on the landing page without setting any filters, you would have um, returned results from all seven of these sources. So let's say there's a specific article that you're looking for from the online version that you can't access due to the paywall. Um, for instance, if I found an article pertaining to criminal justice on the front page of the New York Times website, um, I could just copy the title of an article and then I would go and select the online version of the Times. And I could paste it into the search bar um, for my example, I'm actually going to use um, an article from May 4th, 2020, entitled, Florida Law Restricting Felon Voting is Unconstitutional Judge Rules. Just one moment. So it comes right up, this top result. And again, if you click it, you'll get the full text of it. We don't have any photos or infographics or anything from the article, just the straight information. If you'd like, you can save it as a PDF or you can generate a citation. Um, if I wanted to track this particular issue, I can go back to the search. And let's say I want to just return articles on felon voting, just take a few keywords out of that article title. Oops, not that. One moment. I 
and when I search using these terms, I get 356 results. And if I wanted to monitor the issue from the time that Amendment 4 passed, I can set the date range from 2018 through the present and click Update. Um, and then if you're monitoring an ongoing issue, basically you would just set it up from the point when the story was developing through the present, and then you can go to save the, um, set up the alert, create alert. And then that way you'll be sent alerts to be notified of any related stories to the search terms that arise. Okay, so I'm going to spare you the tutorial of the historical version of the New York Times database because the functionality is exactly the same as it's also a ProQuest database. And for that same reason, we'll take only a very brief look at the ProQuest Historical Newspapers U.S. Southeast collection. Let me just check the chat box to make sure I'm not missing anything. All righty. No questions, so I'll proceed. So again, we'll return to the e-resources page, and this time we will go to Historical Newspaper Southeast Collection. And here's the landing page for ProQuest Historical Newspapers US Southeast Collection. I know that with this particular audience, you're not often looking at very dated articles. Um, with only a few exceptions I can think of, including our research project that DL, DLIS staff assisted Opaga with concerning news articles about the Okoe massacre in 1920. Um, that was a few years ago. What I will say is that this database is very much my go-to for hunting down primary sources con concerning historical events when I use when I assist patrons. Um, so let's just take a quick look at the publications within this database that are offered, providing coverage of historical events in Florida. Again, we'll select publications. And then in the search bar, I'm going to type in Florida just to pull up any newspapers that are published out of Florida. And I'll, from the menu, select in publication summary. And we'll see that the whole database includes 74 publications. And then when we use that search term, we find that 38 of those 74 publications are Florida newspapers, including the Tallahassee Democrats predecessor, the Daily Democrat, and a number of papers providing historical coverage of Miami, et cetera. And from here, I think you know how to find what you're looking for based on our demonstrations of the other ProQuest databases. So next, let's take a look at the newspapers.com database. Okay. We'll return to the e-resources page, scroll down to newspapers.com. It's asking for my library card. Um, so often when you're selecting a database, you're gonna be prompted for your 14 digit library card number and pen. So just one moment while I enter mine. If you ever forget your pen, um, we can reset it for you, just give us a call. If you signed up for a card a long time ago, it's generally the last four digits of your work phone number. Um, but more recently, um, we've adjusted our form to where you create your own PIN number. Okay. So I'm going to run a search for articles about criminal justice. And then I'm going to set the location to Florida. And then hit search. And that way we only get papers published in Florida. 
And as you can see, the results include a little preview of where the search terms appear in the text, and you can use the arrows to scroll through its appearances in the result. So here you can see that I'm clicking through, and you can see all the instances where those search terms appear. And we're gonna click on the first result, which is from the Panama City News Herald. And let's go ahead and zoom out. And that way when we zoom out, we can see more of the page the article appeared on, including a photo illustration. At the top, there are a bunch of options, including to find other terms on this page, um, to print or save the article or page as a PDF or JPEG, or to share it on social media or by email. Or if you have an Ancestry account, you can save it to Ancestry.com if you have an account. Um, you can also make, make an account with Newspapers.com and then virtually clip the article and save it to your account like a virtual scrapbook. And if we hover over the article, we'll see that I actually already clipped this one. And um, when I clipped it, I was able to include a little comment here. This is just a test clipping for the purpose of this presentation. But you can see how this could be useful because if you're gathering newspaper articles and you're working on a group project, then you can type your little notes to your team members about perhaps why you chose this article. Um, just useful comments when you're collaborating. So let's go back to the databases portal and we're gonna explore the next database, which is Gale Florida Newspaper Database from the Florida Electronic Library. We'll select that one. Okay. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this database because a lot of the papers that it offers overlap with US Newsstream. However, there is one key exception. The Gale Florida Newspaper Database includes full text articles from the Florida Times Union from January 1996 through the present, with the exception of 2019 through 2020. US News Stream does not have good coverage of the Jacksonville area. So, excuse me, this database is a better option for coverage of Duval County. And just as with US News Stream, it's possible to set up alerts for when new articles from a particular paper are added to the database or set up current alerts conforming to your specified search criteria. So I'm just gonna run a little test search for criminal justice. The um, default that this Gale database um, sets to is magazines displaying magazine articles, so you want to um, check news articles. And here you can see the sources. We're getting material from Tampa Bay Times, Palm Beach Post. Um, those are included in US News Stream, but here we're getting Florida Times Union. And if I select Florida Times Union, it gives you information about the coverage and also coverage exceptions. And that's where I'm finding that the full text coverage exceptions um, are 2019 and 2020. So I have two more honorable mentions that are not included in on, your, on our e-resources page, but are good newspaper resources to know about anyway. Um, and those are the Florida Newspaper Project from the University of Florida and the Chronicling America Project from the Library of Congress. So just one second while I pull this up for you. Bear with me just a moment. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. So first we have the Florida Newspaper Project from the University of Florida. This began as a project to create a statewide database of microfilm holdings. 
So if you're not sure which libraries would have the issues you're looking for, you can search the Florida Newspaper Project at web.uflib.ufl.edu.fnp. This project also includes the Florida Digital Newspaper Library, which is a free access database to digitize versions of Florida newspapers, both current and historical. This has an even larger selection of Florida newspapers than our subscription databases, though most of them are older, including both a selection of current papers from, 20, from 2005 through the present and many historical discontinued papers. There are nearly 700 different titles from dozens of cities and towns across the state. And the best part about it is that it's free to everyone, not just state employees or UF students and faculty. This project is kept free by federal funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities and the Institute for Museum and Library Services as part of the National Digital Newspaper Program. Okay. So I'm just gonna run a real quick search here. Let's actually view all items within the digital newspaper library. You'll see here that there are 683 titles within the database. That's not 683 scans, that's 683 separate newspapers. And we have this report, which is from 2019. We have um, newspapers from Reconstruction. We have um, newspapers from the early 20th century. Alachua County today, we actually have um, from 2007 through 2011. Um, this is an antebellum newspaper from, New from St. Augustine. And the Appalachia Cola Courier is actually a ter territorial era newspaper. So just fabulous coverage of Florida, um, both geographically and chronologically. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you the Chronicling America project. Um, this is also a program funded by the IMLS, um, and it includes historical newspapers from across the country that have been scanned and digitized, either by the Library, Library of Congress itself or by various state institutions like the UF Digital Newspaper Library that we just discussed. Chronicling America includes searchable pages of newspapers from between the years of 1777 through 1963 from all over the United States. Uh, currently, there are a total of 3,501 different newspapers from across the U.S. made available through the Library of Congress site. And those are searchable in the same way as the Access Newspaper Archive or Historical News New York Times are. Um, and just like uh, these other newspapers, databases that I've shown you, you can or just like in um, newspaper newspa newspapers.com, you can get the scans in either PDF or JPEG format. You can access this collection for free from any computer or internet connected device by going to chroniclingamerica.loc.gov. And just one moment while I switch back over to our presentation slides. Okay. One moment. Just one second. Thank you. Okay. So I mentioned that we would touch on our desktop delivery services. I did briefly discussed the table of contents service with you earlier. Um, this is the form. I have it linked below, um, so you'll easily be able to access it um, when you receive the slide deck. And um, what the table of contents service is, is basically a really great way to stay up to date on developments within your field. Um, but also a great way to save money on subscriptions to popular magazines, such as 
um, the Smithsonian, Harper's, The New Yorker, um, National Geographic, et cetera. And um, as I mentioned, we have many uh, periodicals on professional topics such as Corrections Today, also a number of um, titles pertaining to the sciences such as Florida Scientist um, and Science News and Scientific American. How it works is you fill out the form and you select all the titles you're interested in. There is no upper limit to the number of titles that you can select. And every time that the State Library receives a new issue via mail, we will um, send you the, a scan of the table of contents and you can respond to us with the page ranges of the articles you're interested in and we'll scan and send those to you with the caveat that we cannot scan an entire magazine for you due to copyright restrictions. Um, also, if you find a citation when you're reading um, an article and you want to, and you can't find that article with any of our databases, um, you can fill out a request through our article request form. Just fill the form out with your personal information and as complete information as possible about the article you're seeking. Um, and that will get sent over to our interlibrary loan specialist, Sarah Shaw, and she will quickly hunt down that article and get it to you. I'd also like to draw your attention to Flynn Share It, which is a platform that we launched actually a year ago this week. And Phone Share It is a library cooperative. It's a collection of Florida libraries that work together to share their resources with you. So if you're ever looking for a book on a, for, for instance, on a criminal justice topic and we don't have it in the State Libraries collection, you can place a request through the Flynn Share It platform. Um, and we will work with libraries across the state to get that sent to your office. Does anybody want a real quick demonstration of the Flynn Share It plat platform, or will the link at the bottom suffice? You can let me know in chat. Okay, if not, then you know where to reach me. Um, you can contact the State Library um, at info at dos.myflora.com or at our main reference line, 245-6682. Um, we have a staff of librarians, as I said, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30, who are here and we are ready to take your questions and hunt down whatever articles you need, whatever information you're seeking for your projects. Um, do we have any questions? If not, then um, that concludes the webinar. And again, I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Have a great day.